everyone and welcome to the book refuge and welcome to another recommendations video today i'm doing a rec video that was suggested to me by one of my viewers and it's one i realized that i had a lot for like she initially asked for this recommendations video which is as you'll see is a wounded hero or wounded warrior and i was like oh i don't think i have any of those and then i looked in i looked up some of them on goodreads and i was like oh i actually have a lot of these and it is a trope that i like quite a bit so what wounded warrior kind of means just in the context of what i'll be talking about um means that we have a hero who has been to war received trauma injury mentally or physically or both in some sense and now comes home with either ptsd or a feeling that they are unlovable or feeling that their heart isn't worth the risk or that no one could want them because of how they look or how broken they feel so those are kind of the qualifications I'm using when I picked books um, because I think that's a really interesting one when to, to me as the reader, I find these people immensely lovable. I find them brave and admirable and you did something amazing, but war doesn't feel that way to the person who's living it. So also I want to say a thank you to all my friends and family who have served and to all of our veterans and current active service people around the world. This isn't on a special day. I think every day we should be thankful to those people. And so while I'm about to talk about some smutty books involving them, <laughs> I just want it to be known that I highly, highly respect their courage and their willingness to do what I am not equipped to. And yeah. All right. Enough of that. Let's dive into this and start with a series that I really, really love. I'm showing you my favorite one. Um, but this entire series is called The Survivor's Club, and it's by Mary Below. It starts with, the first one is called The Proposal, just so you know. This is book four, and it's called Only Enchanting. So this is about Flavian um, and this girl named Agnes. And so Flav so what The Survivor's Club is, anyway, it's about six men and one woman who were wounded in the Napoleonic Wars. And they formed a friendship, and then two or three times a year they all go to this one guy's house and they meet and they basically have therapy sessions together to work through it. So each of them has a different injury or PTSD or something. Um, one of them is blind. One of them is paralyzed. One of them stutters. There's all these different issues that people have. And so it's very interesting. I find it very courageous and awesome that she dives into so many different painful aspects of this and shows that there just isn't one kind of injury to surviving war. Some of them were tortured. Some of them had to kill. Some of them were almost killed. And ooh, it's, it's so good. And it's so deep and painful. Um, this one for me, um, Yes, yeah, so Flavian, he proposes to Agnes to get revenge on the woman he used to love who won't be with him now. Um, Agnes is this sweet, wonderful woman and she is totally falling in love with him. And when she finds that out, it just completely breaks her heart. But Flavian, he is a charmer and he is, you know, like all of them dealing with his pain. And I just really love how these two find a way to make it work together. I want to talk about Dancing at Midnight by Julia Quinn. This is uh, about Lord John Blackwood and Lady Bella, Lady Arabella. Um, and they have been, I believe they've been friends for a while. And then, or no, they haven't met before. Sorry, it's been a long time since I've read this one. But I know that he has a limp because he was injured in war and he's really suffering with PTSD. And then he meets Arabella and they immediately have kind of a little like uh, uh, angst going between them. Um, they end up dancing together, even though like he can't like it's very painful for him to dance because of the injury that he has she kind of makes him want to try again it makes him want to get stronger and um he just wants her so much but he doesn't know 
if he can overcome his past to find love again or if he deserves it. And he's just my like quintessential <laughs> wounded hero because there's just so much that like you can't just leave the war behind you. Like it doesn't stay in the past if you don't face it and deal with it. And I really, really love these two and their love story just makes me so, so happy. Next, I want to talk about Only Love by Melanie Harlow. This is actually the third in her one and only series about three sisters. This one is so cute. This is about Ryan, who is an ex-Marine, um, and Stella, the oldest sister of the three. Stella has just, um, she got dumped on her birthday by this, like, complete asshole who is already seeing someone else and she is just like done with men. Her grandmother lives um, a little ways away from her and she hears about what happens and Grams has just gotten a new neighbor named Ryan who is a war hero. He's been recently divorced. He's suffering with PTSD but he's just gotten a job at Cloverly Farms which I love the Cloverly series as well. Um, and he's been being her handyman and doing um, things around the house for her grams and she's been feeding him, but he's been keeping his distance because he doesn't want to be entangled with people or have too many interactions, which is terribly sad, but that's just the place that he's at. And so Grams tricks Stella into coming to stay with her by pretending to have dementia, which is just not the nicest thing to do, but also Grams knows that Stella and Ryan need each other. And so she goes about engineering the perfect meet cute and making sure that these two lonely hearts get a chance at love. And it is so good. Melanie Harlow writes these beautiful, like they're a mix of rom-com and deep human interactions and playfulness and love and I just love her stories. I've read almost all of her books at this point and I really think you should give her a try. She's self-published. Most of her books are on Kindle Unlimited and I mean but I I have to buy some of them because they're just too they're too good. I have to do it. Next I have A Night to Surrender by Tessa Dare. So this book Oh my gosh, this is the first in the Spindle Cove series. So Spindle Cove is a place where um, ladies who have different like social anxieties or are considered failures of the ton or aren't appreciated by their parents can come and stay to get healing. Um, it's, it's really hard to explain the full extent of what's being done until you try reading this book, so I'm not uh, going to do that, but we have a wounded hero in here named Victor Bramwell, and he has been sent home and put on leave because he is injured, and he has an injury on his leg, and he can't work super well, but all he wants to do is get back to battle because that's all that he knows. That's all that he thinks he's good for, and he needs... Um, Susanna's father, who is building a new kind of weapon or cannon, I can't remember, and he figures that if he can go there and help make sure this works out, that he will get a commission and be able to go back to war again. But Susanna and Spindle Cove, there's all women there, and they're very, you know, they have a very fine line they're walking so that these women are able to be here and heal. And this group of soldiers coming into town could be exactly what ruins everything. And so Susanna and Victor really bump heads. Victor just wants to get in, get what he needs and get out. And Susanna doesn't want him there at all. And so they're kind of at a, I wouldn't fully call them a hate to love, but there's some tension and it's really beautiful. And Susanna, she also has some ways that she can help him heal his leg. And in healing his leg, she may be doing exactly the thing he needs to leave her. And the story was really beautiful. And it, it's very interesting side of the wounded hero where we have someone who all he wants to do is go back, which I feel like we don't always see. Then I have a book that I've mentioned in too many of these videos recently, and that's When She Said I Do by Celeste Bradley, where... I'm going to tell this from the man's point of view this time because I've been telling it from Callie's point of view. But since this is Wounded Hero and we're talking about them, I'm going to start from his side. So we have Ren here who he was a spy for the king 
and he was sold out by one of his partners and was tortured, burned, beaten, and left for dead. And he is horribly scarred. He has burns and scars and he's like hunched a little because his back muscles are atrophied and he thinks that he's just waiting to die. So he's living alone in his family manor and just waiting to die. And then one night as he's stalking through his home, he finds a girl who started a fire and is wearing his mother's jewelry and he thinks she's an angel. And since he thinks this is a dream and he's damned to die soon, he decides to take advantage of this angel and ends up getting confronted by her brother and challenged to a duel. And Ren, who is ready to die anyway, says, screw this, I'm just going to let this guy kill me and this pain that I'm in will be over. But he doesn't account for Callie not going to let things go that way. And so Callie jumps in front, says that he's going to marry her and make it respectable and everything's going to be okay. So he agrees to marry Callie and make her his countess. I don't know if he's a, I think he's a viscount or whatever. I'm not sure. But he's planning to die. But before he dies, he's going to make sure he has some pleasure. So he makes a deal with Callie that for every pearl on the necklace that she'd stolen, she will have one act of pleasure with him. And when she has all the pearls back, she can leave and she can leave him there to die. But what he doesn't account for is that Callie's starting to have feelings for him. And now his death sentence sounds like the worst thing in the world instead of the peace that he was hoping it would be. Because Callie is slowly bringing him back to life. There you go. Those are five Wounded Warrior recommendations from me. Let me know some of your favorites. Um, let me know if you've read some of these and what you think of them. Thanks so much for watching. I put up new videos four to five four to five, three to four times a week, and you can see some of those right now. Bye.